Hello and welcome to another trip report. This time from Copenhagen in Denmark, the capital of Denmark, via Malmö to Göteborg, so the largest city of Denmark, to the second and third largest city of Sweden. I think via the third largest city to the second largest city. I won't take the train all the way to Göteborg though. I'll tell you more about this um, with the use of a voiceover. Anyway, I hope you like this video. When you do so, give me a thumbs up on YouTube. And when you like to see more train related videos, subscribe to my channel. For now, let's roll the intro. Before I start the video, a quick comparison on the route Copenhagen Göteborg when you're traveling by train, car, or plane. Of course, trains will not clean the air, but the environmental impact of trains is really a lot lower. When it comes to carbon dioxide that is causing global warming, the train will be more than 99.75% more efficient than the plane. This basically means that when you travel 400 times up and down by train, you still haven't got the same kind of emission as when you're traveling one time by plane. The netto travel time between train, car and plane is roughly the same. I think the train is the most relaxed way to travel because it would take you in one go from city center to city center. When you even consider flying on this route, you just haven't understand it. For now, let's continue with the video. I arrived in Copenhagen by an intercity train from Hamburg in Germany. There will be a video about this on my channel soon, so stay tuned. When you step out of the railway station in Copenhagen, you will be at the theme park Tivoli right away. But since you're watching this video, you probably won't expect a theme park guide. And besides that, I'm not that much of a theme park guy anyway. So let's go into the railway station and stick with the themes of this video. Before I will explain you more about the railway company, the routes and the trains on this route, I will first show you the railway station of Copenhagen main station. Over here, you find a big passenger hall from where you can enter most platforms. I say most because some of them you have to enter via a different way. I'll show you this in a bit. At the main center of the passenger hall, you find a lot of vending machines for national train tickets, but also for the Öresund stock, that's the company that I'll be taking today. Near some exits, you also find vending machines for the SJ. This is the national state-owned railway company of Sweden and they do have X2000 high-speed trains between here and Stockholm, at least before Covid. Now these train services have been suspended, but hopefully these services will be extended to Copenhagen soon. Now you have to travel first to Malmö, what is very doable by the way. Of course you find different entrances and exits in this railway station. At the, I think, officially front part, what is just like the main passenger hall above the platform, you will find a pickup and drop off zone for railway passengers by cars. Near this exit, you find this miniature railway. When you insert a coin, a train will start to ride. And when you're feeling lucky, well, you just throw in three coins, because then there will be three trains riding. This is something you find at bigger German railway stations as well, by the way. But let's go back to the railway station and show you the other exit. At several spots within the main hall, but also near the entrances and the exits, you find these screens with information about departing and arriving trains. The entrance to the Vestebro part will be via these stairs. You can also take the elevator, of course. This part of the city has been improved a lot since my first visit to Copenhagen. I think this was in 2009. Back then, this was a red light district and there were quite a lot of junkies. Right now, it's a hip, trendy neighborhood. Around the station, you find lots of bikes because bikes and Denmark, they go really good hand in hand. When you want to get around, I just advise you to hire a bike. You can use, for example, Donkey Republic. This is a bike sharing program that started in Denmark, but can be found in many European countries including the city where I live, The Hague in the Netherlands. These bikes are much more affordable than renting an electric step or an electric scooter. Apart from that, real bikes are just healthier and better for the environment. 
let's go back to the main passenger hall of Copenhagen main station. At the same part as where you find the entrance and exit to Vesterbro, you will find the booking office of DSB, the state-owned railway company of Denmark. There's also a first class lounge over here, but it's only open on working days. The lounge is open from 6 a.m. in the morning until 7 p.m. at night. When it comes to facilities, the main hall isn't just a waiting hall, but it's also a marketplace where most things can be bought. Fresh fruit sellers, a postal office, a supermarket, currency exchanges and banks, fast food places, coffee shops, restaurants and pubs and the list goes on and on. Domestic and most international trains that do depart from here don't have a dining car, so you can better buy some food and drinks in advance. Although the train that I took from Hamburg to here had a vending machine for cold drinks on board. For first class passengers, free coffee was provided. I will tell you more about this on the video from Hamburg to Copenhagen. For now, let's go to the platforms. In the main passenger hall, directions to the platforms are clearly given. Before you enter the platform, there's a screen that will give information about the next departure. Within the main hall, you'll find elevators and at the side of the building, you find escalators and stairs to the platforms. At the track, you'll find obviously screens and over here, you can also find the composition of the train so you know where you have to stand. My train was pretty tiny on this route. Smaller screens with basic route information about departing trains can be found at several spots at the platform as well. At the other end you will find this bridge where you can also park a lot of bikes and there are some bus stops along this bridge as well. When you need to go to track 26 you have to go via this bridge or you have to walk along the platform that hosts the tracks 3 or 5 or the platform that hosts the tracks 5 or 6. This is about 200 meters away from the main railway station building. Maybe it's just me, but the first time my train was departing from track 26, I had to look a little bit for it. I was a bit confused, but that's already a long time ago. I also didn't notice actually until I was home and started to edit this video that the Copenhagen main railway station is also located to the metro. You'll find these elevators that will go down and there are stairs as well. These elevators and stairs do not only connect the metro, but also the tracks that are located right next to the main station building. The last time I was here was in 2017, and back then there was no metro yet over here. At most platforms you find a small convenience store as well by the way. Time to show you the train that I'll be taking. Like I mentioned, train composition can be found at these displays. The composition of the train will refer to some letters you can find at the platform so you know what carriage will stop more or less where. For example the letter E you can see right here in front of me. What is a bit stupid of me? When the train was coming into the railway station at Copenhagen I didn't film it since I did some more trips in and around here, all international by the way. I filmed the departure of these trains here in Malmö Central Station. These train sets do consist of three carriages that can be combined. As you can see on the outside, the front one and the last one are not exactly the same. The last one is a refurbished train set and the first one is a non-refurbished train set. Bike icons, a wheelchair icon and a buggy icon do indicate exactly where you can enter the train when you're traveling with these items. And above the entrance door, the carriage number, the final destination and the route have been written. I think this is very useful. When I filmed it at the moment I was entering the train to Gothenburg, it was quite busy. But I also took this train from Helsingør in Denmark and there this train was pretty much empty. So I could film easily on my own face. And here I'm entering the refurbished train set. When you enter these trains, above the entrance doors it has been clearly marked where you have to go for what seat numbers. In this video I'll show you both the refurbished and the non-refurbished train set. And I'll start off with the first class of the refurbished train set. The first class comes, just like in second class by the way, in a 2x2 two two configuration. Just like pretty much all over the train, you'll find a lot of space for your luggage in the overhead luggage racks. 
But in the first class you also find these dedicated luggage racks at the beginning of the carriage and on the other side you will find a coat hanger. Directly under the coat hanger you can also place larger items. Some seats are facing each other and they have a table in between. This table includes a cup holder as well. And the other seats come in this composition, like an aeroplane or a touring car. You find a fold out table, this small holder for your phone, a coat hanger, a footrest and a magazine rack. There are no garbage cans, instead of that you will find these plastic bags so you can take your garbage and throw it away at the railway station. All windows do have sunscreens and I really like this layout of this sunscreen. It's really vandalism proof. Within these trains you will find several toilets. This is how the regular toilets look like. They are pretty fine but nothing special. There is also a bigger toilet in the middle carriage. The bigger toilet is for passengers that do have movability problems and you can also turn that toilet into a nursery space for babies. Near the entrances and the exits between the compartments there is a line map, a map of the train and you find some folding seats over here. Extra space for luggage in the second class can be found between the back end of some seats so you don't have to occupy extra seats. And of course you also find overhead luggage racks over here in second class. Second class comes as you can see just like first class in a 2x2 two two configuration. The seats that do come in a touring car coach or aeroplane composition do have a small fold out table and a magazine rack. The other option is having seats that do face each other and there you find a small table at the side near the window. All second class seats do have an armrest between the seats and the headrest can be adjusted up and down. The seats are not reclinable. Seat numbers can be found on the luggage racks and over here there is also an indicator that says from where to where the seat has been reserved. This counts for both first and second class. Integrated in the luggage racks there are reading lights and there is also an entertainment system that's here. Although I didn't test it out. It is cool but a bit old fashioned. You need a 3.5mm plug in. In the middle carriage you will find some regular second class seats as you can see here. And over here in this little room you can find the railway staff. Another part that's a bit lower and also easier to access the train when you're traveling with a bike, wheelchair or when you just have a lot of luggage. You find this over here. Near this spot there's also a toilet that's accessible for people in a wheelchair or that you can turn into a nursery space for babies. LED screens that provide basic route information can be found at the end of its compartment. Power plugs and also coat hangers can be found integrated within these luggage racks. And the coolest part, at least when you ask me, is when you combine these train sets, you can walk from one train set to the other one. When you saw some previous videos of mine, you saw trains that are very much like this in Belgium. And in Belgium they do have the nickname Danny's Nose, because you find a lot of these trains in Denmark. I think this is really cool, you can really see the driver cabin. And from the outside it almost looks like it's just one train set. For now I will show you very briefly the non refurbished train sets. When you take the great picture they are basically the same. This is how the first class looks like in these older train sets. It's a little more old fashioned but still fine. And the middle carriage this is where you find the biggest transformation. Over here there is less space for luggage. But instead of that you will find vending machines over here. I don't know what I prefer more. On a long journey I think I like these vending machines more. But a lot of people just use these trains for commuting. Besides that, these vending machines are not working at the moment I was here. And when you really want to have a dining car on this route, you better change trains in Malmo. And from Malmo you can take an X2000 train that does have a dining car. Free Wi-Fi is available in these trains. And the speed, it's just really good. The top speed is 180 km per hour on the Swedish section. Therefore, between Malmo and Gothenburg, these trains are a bit slower than the high speed trains of the Swedish state owned railway company SJ, that also stop less than these trains. Öresundstock is a corporation of two railway companies. In Denmark, the DSB, the state owned railway company of Denmark, is responsible. And in Sweden, Veolia Transport Sweden is responsible. 
trains do operate between every 10 minutes and every hour. Depends a little bit on the time of the day and the route of course. Due to the complicity of this network, because of different countries, and the different way trains will be used, because in Sweden these are much more long distance trains than in Denmark, from December 2021 this will be split up in two concessions. The Danish state-owned railway company will take over the part Helsingør, Copenhagen and a Swedish operator will take over the international part from Copenhagen and of course the Swedish part. For this journey I traveled with an interrail ticket. You can just hop on any train. As far as I found out regular ticket prices are fixed. But of course a lot of people just use these trains to commute so therefore I expect that they will also have special fares for when you use these trains very frequently. In Sweden you find on the route malmö gothenburg also another railway company. That's the state owned railway company SJ. When you travel with SJ on this route there will be X2000 high speed trains. These are a little bit faster and they do have an onboard restaurant like I mentioned earlier. But these tickets are not transmittable. When you have a ticket for the Öresund stock, you can just take any Öresund stock on this route. It's possible to make a seat reservation, but it's not obligated. When you want to travel to Norway, these trains also play a crucial role. From Copenhagen there are trains to Germany and from Gothenburg there are trains to Norway. But of course you can also take the ferry. Sweden has a good privatized railway system. There are lots of local railway companies and you find SJ, the state owned railway company, for important national connections. On popular routes in Sweden, so mainly between the biggest cities, there are also commercial train operators. And one of my favorite one of all is Sneltoget. Sneltoget also runs a sleeper train between Stockholm and Berlin and these sleeper trains also do call at the railway stations of Malmö and Copenhagen. By the way, I do know a way how to get cheaper tickets. I don't know if this rule still applies after December 2021, so I'll be sure there will be a new video where I will explain you more about this. When I have uploaded that video, probably by the beginning of 2022, there will be a link to that video in the description of this video. Another nice and fun way of a ticket is around the sound ticket. This is not being advertised very well, but you can buy it for example at the ticket desk of Malmö of Skane Trafficken, and I think you can also buy it in Copenhagen. It gives you unlimited access in one direction and only one way for this circle. It's by train and between Helsingborg and Helsinger there's a ferry. These ferries are electric by the way. There is definitely a lot more I like to tell you, but I already gave you a lot of information. When you have any questions just leave a comment, and also when you just want to say hello feel free to leave a comment. For now I'll show you some views from the train between Copenhagen and Helsingborg, because I didn't took this train all the way to Gothenburg. So that's it for this video. The train will continue to Göteborg or Gothenburg, I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, I'm now, now at the railway station of Helsingborg. From here on I will take a ferry back to Denmark where I will take a train to Copenhagen again. There will be another video on that as well. For now I hope you like this video. When you do so give me a thumbs up on YouTube and when you like to see more train related videos 
or ferry related because I'm taking the ferry right now, subscribe to my channel. See you on my next video. When you are interested in other trip reports I did, below the description of this video on YouTube, you'll find a link to a map and on this map you'll find all trip reports I did. The lines do indicate the routes of these trains and the station and ferry icons do indicate the station and ferry terminal reviews. There will be a lot more new lines soon. The focus for this YouTube channel is international and long distance train and ferry travel. When you want to support this channel, you can like the videos, you can leave a comment and you can also subscribe to my channel. This is very much appreciated. But there's something more you can do. I do have a Patreon account as well and you can also support this channel financially. You can already do this from 1 euro, dollar or pound per month. I started this channel back in September 2019 when I went to China and Korea by train. Back then I worked for a company that was selling international train tickets all over the world. So therefore I do know a lot about train fares. Due to Covid all employees got fired. I also lost my job but I found a new job for this one after that. Not in the train business though. This channel is mainly focusing on international and long distance train traveling. Just to show you what it's like to travel on a more sustainable way of transportation. So show you what it's like to travel on train instead of taking the car or the plane. And while I'm doing this I'm trying to answer as many questions as people ask me at the moment I worked for the travel agency that was selling international train tickets. Even though Covid made it a bit more challenging for me to make new videos and the videos are not as exciting as I planned it to be. Patreon is stimulating me in a good way to create more and new content. Apart from that, it also offers me a unique way to interact in a different way with my audience. Everything I earn on this channel, both Patreon and being monetized on YouTube, will go directly into the channel again. I don't earn anything on this channel, as a matter of fact it costs me money. But I don't mind because I really like to do this. So, when you like to support this channel financially, you can go to patreon.com slash trainviking and you also have some extra benefits.